I would like to warmly thank the Center of Modern Greece for being here. It's a great pleasure for me, representing Tovima, a major Greek newspaper for Greece, a uh, center-left newspaper, but with a great tradition pr on promoting literature and ideas. So uh, I wanna, I'm going to be short because everyone was great. One thing marker is because Marker stands here with us like um, an exception. Marker is not only one of uh, Greece's most celebrated contemporary authors, but also a respectable public intellectual. Um, and let me insist on this characteristic because both qualities do not usually coincide. In fact, there are uh, <sighs> There are not many writers knowing uh, how the world wor works generally. So, um, Markaris would never paddle in the shallow uh, waters of pervasive anti-German sentiment that reappeared in Greece in recent years, but he would never as well accept the so-called uh, lazy Greeks um, as the only scapegoats around destroying EU as some uh, German politicians or my colleagues carelessly propose. Uh, my speech is going to be limited only to his recent work, an ambitious and simultaneously daring project for the Greek author, what he called the Crisis Trilogy. The first novelistic part was published back in 2010, um, but in 2014 he felt that he had to add one more book to his trilogy, essentially one more novel uh, entitled Epilogue. Uh, of course, pr the protagonist is Kostas Charitos. Uh, he's always a protagonist, a middle class head of family man, a dutiful civil servant for the Greek police, and something that um, uh, is really his characteristic is that he's a guy more or less from the right, not from the left. So, I'm based here not only on my readings of Marguerite's books, uh, the Tetralogy, as it turned out, but also to the conversations I had with him through all these years. Their main parts turned into interviews, uh, which were published at Tovima Tiskiriakis, the Sunday Tribune. Um, and I'm doing so, I'm quoting Marguerite and combining his opinions. Uh, with my approaches because I fully believe that in this way you will get a better idea about what drives him as an author who creates even though we classify him uh, inevitably to crime fiction or to the Mediterranean noir more lately uh, narratives creates narratives that are essentially socio-political before going ahead I would like to underline that writing fiction in Greece or about Greece is by definition a strange matter. Um, what in Greece is perceived as reality in that beautiful, weird and absurd place is somehow the fiction itself. Subsequently, every serious literary attempt to represent this reality, let's say through realism, is extremely sleepy for the author and usually hits at something that surpasses it. For understanding the dimension of the challenge uh, to which Marker is responded, let us think that the author did not only depict properly the above-mentioned difficult reality by embodying it into his permanent form of fiction, but also registered it while being extremely attuned to it. Uh, the overwhelming majority of critical reviews in Greece has acknowledged Marker's two basic achievements in these four books. A, that the external or the actual elements of the crisis are inscribed operationally within his novels, derived from within, interwoven with the plots. Uh, in other words, there were not just a journalistic report on things. And B, that the social, political, and cultural pathogenesis of the country are not just um, decorating elements uh, on the narratives, but also acquire a historical depth. 
In the first novel of the trilogy, um, Loans in Arrears, uh, that begins during the economic turmoil, the murderer's victims have the same denominator, which is bank money. Um, a bank governor is found decapitated by an ancient sword, while the city of Athens is full of posters that urge citizens not to pay their bank debts. After that, we have the similar murders of a credit rating, rating agency's official and someone who owns a collection company who is a, who is a debt collector. What drives the narrative uh, is whether we have to do with a shattered, in, uh, indignant individual or uh, with coordinated terrorist attacks. The second part of the trilogy, uh, which is called Termination, is a novel about tax evasion and punishment. I told Marcus at the time, while we were discussing, that only a Greek could write such a novel. Marco said, and an Italian, perhaps. And he went on saying that tax evasion goes hand in hand with big uh, corruption, usually. In this novel, the murderer, in other words, the national tax collector, kills tax evaders and systems favored using ancient weapons, again, hemlock injected, bow and arrow. And after that, he leaves his victims at archaeological sites. Then I asked the author whether someone who is forced today to pay an exceptional heavy tax has to adapt Socrates' attitude. Well, it's difficult to give you an answer, Marcus said to me. Ancient Greeks knew how to make civilization and war, but primordially, um, they knew to punish the infringers. The murderer in this novel stands for the culture of impunity that dominates modern Greece. Here, nobody punishes anyone um, because nobody takes the responsibility for that. And because every possible punishment will generate such a chain of untouchable guilties also. A very insightful um, comment on modern Greece. The third part of the trilogy is the bread uh, education liberty. This is the slogan of the uh, revolted students and uh, students of 1973 against the military junta. Marker is in this novel focuses on the so-called Politechnia generation, uh, which has forgotten its ideals after taking and consolidating the power and with its mishandling, mishandling manipulations led to, as Marcre said, two lost generations of Greeks. Inspector Haritos clearly de declares in this novel, we are drawn back to 50s. And I recite the author's whole statement. I am interested in this class between that generation and today's youth. I believe that Politechnia generation owes an apology. When they took up the government, they choose the effortless path. Instead of developing the country upon the economic solidarity of European Union that came in generously, they just wasted the money. You know, they traded upon the thirst of a whole nation to get rid of a dictatorship and to be governed by a left progressive party. And it is true that in Greece, this book annoyed much more and more people um, than the other ones. Uh, and in this one, what's going on? At the beginning of 2014, Greece introduces again a national currency, uh, drachma, as uh, European, as other European southern countries do, Spain, uh, Peset, and so on. So I said to Marcus at the time uh, that this is a dystopic scenario, and Marcus told me, indeed, it is because. The way Europe as a whole manages the crisis leads to impasse, I am afraid. Northern countries say enough is enough, we won't give more money, and they are right about it. And on, on the other hand, some southern countries thinking in the contrary way will say enough is enough, we won't give our souls for saving Euro. Regardless of what other people say to me, said Markaris, I think this scenario exists, and for this reason I put it in the novel. And of course, in that novel, 
takes on the neo-Nazis in Greece. And he goes further at the fourth, uh, at the fourth novel, which is, uh, which is entitled End Titles. As you probably know, Inspector Haritos, at difficult and embarrassing moments, is looking for solutions into dictionaries. Um, especially the famous one by Dimitrakos. Uh, let's see what meanings Haritos is changing in this final uh, novel. The words, violence, fascism, bankruptcy, heavy tax, graft, bureaucracy, procrastination, inefficiency, and here it appears we have the backbone of the, of the novel, um, of the epilogue. To sum things up, uh, Marcaris decided to put his hand in the fire because many of his colleagues did it as well and they were totally out of point. While, uh, and he, and he did, and he did it in this way, he wrote about the different but converging aspects of the Greek crisis while closely watching its dramatic escalation. He succeeded in composing a great literary report that captures crisis at the heat of the moment and at the same time in its perplexity, showing off our historical and cultural specificities. That is, that is a great success of Marcus, whatever can be said um, about talking politics or uh, moralizing in his, in his recent books. Marcus' achievement it's not, is not easy at all. He himself made that easy. He turned out to be the most insightful, dispassionate, which for Greeks is something really important, and rigorously fair dissector of the wounded Greek society. And of course, in the final novel, the author not only focuses on the neo-Nazis, but something essential for the Greek crisis as it turned out. Um, this resurgence of the divisive memory of uh, the Greek Civil War. And Haritos calls this phenomenon ghost's exhumation. So I will skip the whole thing saying that his friend, the left Lambrosisis, as you know, uh, who is now working in a solidarity center for homeless people, says that the country acquires again, reacquires its parastate again which is rising from the crisis bones. So why is so? Because the victims in this book are linked with the winners or the losers of the civil Greek war. And they are, so to say, anonymous, something that I, I think it's very important. And I would like to underline it here because Marker is, is interested, I think, to speak basically about uh, the individual responsibility, but also the responsibility of those groups of people within the Greek society um, who are hidden behind the, the, so, the, the so-called people uh, who, as a Greek saying proposes, is always right. The people is always right. So, and for concluding, skipping many, many, many things, uh, I think that uh, Petros Marker's social gaze, at least for, for us Greeks, and I guess for everyone is more than necessary. Thank you very much.